Today in this episode of Mojo for Industry Development Debate on Electrical Fire Safety powered by Upper Industries Limited and Technology Partner Testo. Experts from the industry will discuss on the best practices to make your space fire safe from an electrical perspective. Let me introduce you with our panelists for the day. We are pleased to join by Mr. Vimal Chavda, Vice President Instrumentation Testo India. Then we have Mr. Asis Goyal, who is the Senior GM of Sales and Marketing for Cable Solutions at Upper Industries Limited. And Mr. Sakti Sukla, who is the Manager R&D, Technical and Quality Assurance at Upper Industries Limited. We will also be joined by Mr. Pankaj Dharkar, who is the Founder and President of Pankaj Dharkar and Associates. And Mr. Harold D'Souza, who is the Regional Commercial Manager for BASIC. So now to take the session forward, uh, may I ask Mr. Vimal Ji, can you at least highlight at least two best practices to make a building fire safe from a from a TNM equipment manufacturer's point of view? Uh, so the first uh, thing is uh, uh, lesser on the newer buildings, more on the older buildings. So you need to get your audits of your building regularly done. And the best way to find uh, these kind of problems is a, a, a thermographical tool, and thermography needs to be done on a regular basis. The other part is using the right type of cables. Uh, and the right type of uh, insulation in your area and not varying the load based on the design. Pankaj, is that the FSCI uh, Suraksha index is going to be mandatory or something voluntary like that? As I said, FSCI is a voluntary organization. It's a non-profit organization. We can't force. But uh, to me, uh, if you see the NBC, the fire audit is becoming compulsory now. Mr. Modi himself is treating and in fact, I have just written a letter to him that we are ready with this index, which complements his vision. We were doing buildings which were just 20, 30 floors. Today we are talking about 60 floors, 70 floors. So the sizes of uh, building, the size, the size, tallness of building are also bringing new challenges and specifically electrical distribution side wiring side uh, bus ducting side i think there are huge challenges uh, uh, i think that can only be corrected with uh, independent and rightly audit processes and it has to be done regularly it can't be done one time and left over because with time uh, there could be many changes happening so it's a process which should continue for years after years for any building is my belief thanks thank you sir now we will have Mr. Harold D'Souza sharing the important aspect of standardization when it comes to cables and wheels quality. So a cable is expected to perform in multitude important roles. These are the few one, integrity, safety and efficiency, and do no harm, EMC, ME, this is for power cable, should not harm the datacom cables. Long life, it is anticipated minimum 20 years. And the biggest issue that we have been talking now, fire, overload, short, short circuit. Today, the challenge is with the fierce competition, the wire and cables manufacturers offer, often wish to minimize their cost. It is not only cables, it is everywhere. But they're still meeting the standard for some time, you know, but it will not be for the long run. In practical terms, this means the cheapest cable with the slimmest compliance win the contract. This is the issue. And why, why product certification is required? There is a case study here in Australia that is made. You know, the 3.9 million, million meters of non-compliant cable was imported to Australia and uh, it was estimated that, you know, about 35 million of Australian dollar. The cost to remove the cable after because of the failure, it was 160 million. So what I mean to say is that uh, using a certified cable is, you know, you lose nothing because a certification cost can be a 1% of your total uh, contract, but the problems you will face is the non-compliant cable, which I already explained to you. Uh, Mr. Asis, from an uh, electrical cable uh, cable manufacturer's point of view, uh, just to summarize, what are the two at least best practices to make a building fire safe? See, uh, for, uh, from uh, wires and cables perspective, so uh, I would recommend each and every uh, consumer should go for this uh, E-beam technology wires, which would stand very high temperature as well as more than 50% current carrying capacity. So right. they, they are uh, truly a step ahead to provide safety from electrical short circuit. Right. Uh, Mr. Sakti, yeah. you are uh, into the R&D. So what is beyond EBIM? Is something beyond EBIM also? See, there are insulations available actually, the thermocyte insulations available which are not been electron beam, but they have a good current, uh, like uh, temperature withstanding capacity as such. 
but uh, as far as you are comparing this technology so for next at least for 10 or 12 years or down the line i can say up to 15 years actually this technology will be a a, a good breakthrough actually and this would be adopted by the manufacturers actually in fact we have put up a technical paper to bis as well to mandate this particular electron beam technology as far as the house wiring has been constrained actually i would like to thank uh, mr pankaj darkar mr vimal chawda mr ashish goel mr uh, sakti sukla and mr harald I, i i would like to express my highest gratitude for your participation uh, it was my pleasure having you here today so thank you delegates for attending we hope you have enjoyed this episode of mojo for industry development debate on electrical fire safety we thank sponsor for the session upper industries limited and technology partner testo we also thank ease of doing business for making us their outreach partner for more updates please subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon